Good luck. All right, so uh, yeah, we get Senta. Let's play what we've been playing recently, which is Third File Rook. You can't see it, but some of the buttons here are not rendering correctly, but at least all my pieces do. Um, all right. I'm trying to remember what I usually play against this. <laughs> Try not to get let nerves get the better of me, but it's a bit late for that, isn't it? I think this move ordering is fine. So I noticed looking up my opponent prior to this game that they tend to play uh, Swinging Rook openings. Um, at least if I remember this opponent correctly. So that's why I'm trying to get a position where um, if we do uh, get a mutual Swinging... Well, it's too late, because like, he's already played Static Rook, but I'm trying to prepare for the impossible. That's what I'm trying to do. So, this looks interesting to me because I could exchange rooks when it's convenient for me. Um, unless I've missed something. So, uh, I do want to watch out for a bishop exchange, which could happen if I lifted my silver uh, to uh, three eight on the right here. Um, I was just checking whether the board capture looks fine. It looks okay on the stream. So yeah, I think my priority is to get the king out of the center. And then I can consider peace exchanges. Uh, but I also need to watch out for a bishop drop over here in this corner if I'm completely reckless. Um, which I'm not this time, but it's just something to look out for. Let's see. All right, my opponent plays Boat Castle. Um, I'm going to play my Edge Pawn because this is going to be part of whatever castle strategy I, or castle or strategy I select here. Um, but yeah, let's complete Mino Castle because since my opponent has castled so quickly, but has not lifted up any of their generals to attack yet. Um, this gives me time to plan out uh, very slowly which pieces... Um, or rather, I can gradually build up a castle and gradually build up my position. I don't need to do something crazy just yet. So, yes, they have very quickly built a castle, and that's the benefit of playing this shape. Um, but so I'm also anticipating they're going to use something to try to hit uh, on the third file. But I can build up a sturdy castle. Um, usually you see me trying to do some aggressive attacking thing in the opening. Not this game. 
this game we got all the time in the world to build like the perfect castle and then later we can attack um unless like suddenly some opportunity presents itself and it becomes very much worth attacking early on but i can't imagine that happening just yet here Okay, that's a lot of pawn moves. It's like he wants me to attack. Um, if I... If I advance on the second file, or rather the eighth file, if you look at the notation, but if I advance on this rook file here, he's just going to put a pawn down again, right in front of my rook. So, just not a lot of merit to me doing that. Um... So I get to make a decision of where my gold is going to sit or stand. Um, I don't have to make that decision yet. So I could play the sixth file, fourth file pawn. I could play the center um, and discourage them from eventually ever getting a bishop on 5-5. Five five. That also takes away the square for my silver. Actually, if I bring up the silver, I am very embarrassed because I should know more than I know at this point. Um, I guess playing games is one way to learn, but I should know some of this. So, what do we do? It is very tempting for me to bring out my silver uh, to 5-6. And then a silver on 5-6 could attack to the left or to the right. Um, the disadvantage of moving the silver again would be that the third file could be compromised faster. Um... Hmm. But yeah, I think the main moves in this position are push the fourth file pawn, the, that's the one on the right fourth file, the center pawn, lift the lance, and something else. Um, I'm just concerned that if I push the wrong pawn, pawns don't go backwards, and I'm opening myself to pieces dropping in my camp. So, what do we do? It's a lot of pawn moves. Uh, well, since I'm so alarmed about the possibility of, well, I just want to bring the silver out and attack something, because it's the easiest thing to do. Although the silver doesn't even escape in one piece. Yeah, it's so tempting. That's yeah, such a bad idea. Um... Let's play this. Since I don't have a clear attacking idea, at least I could play a defensive move. But I think it will not end well. Um, hmm. 
I think this is playable, so my bishop goes back and goes to this diagonal. And um, my rook will come over when the time comes. Okay, so... But now what do we do? The waiting game commences. I think this is fine. This indicates me transitioning from one castle to another. I don't know if I have time for this, but um, I think it's okay. If not, we'll know soon. See, if you push this, then if a knight exchange happens, I have somewhere to put my knight. But there are advantages to pushing it. I'm just not familiar with, they, with what they are. But every move has some advantage and some disadvantage. It's like this blocks the bishop, but um, indicates an attack. So... Um, I'm not sure if pushing this pawn in front of my bishop helps, or if it just makes my game harder. Um, if I push, if they push, I retreat my bishop, the pawn takes pawn, bishop attacks, rook defends the lance, and I don't know what to do. If I just directly bring my bishop onto this long diagonal, um, yeah, then it's even less clear. Um, <laughs> All right, well, I have one idea. Actually, that's not a good idea. Whatever, let's try it. It looks playable. So we are both in the middle of some kind of weird castle transition thing. 
Um, oh, I just expected pawn drop in front of my bishop. They're not forced to do what I was planning. Hmm. Um, that said, maybe I drop the pawn where they want to drop it. Maybe that's a thing. But no, this is just bad. Um, I kind of have to drop the pawn in front. Well, no, I don't. I do not. We can be stubborn about this. Um, give the bishop another square to go to, because regardless of whether or not I've dropped the pawn on 8-5 here, um, if I do, eventually my bishop's going to want the square anyway. If I don't, my bishop might still want the square as somewhere to retreat if they drop a pawn at 8-5. So, yeah, I'm debating whether or not to move my knight out to 7-7 seven, seven here. Um, I'm not sure it gets very far, but if I do put the knight out and I do put a pawn here, I can start attacking without worry about this bishop discovering an attack on my rook. So I guess that's the plan. I sound so certain in my idea. Alright, what else can I... So it's their move. Uh, they have not attacked on the left side of the board. Again, I thought I looked at their profile. I thought they usually played a swinging rook opening. Maybe that is true, and maybe they decided to prepare something special for me. Or maybe I'm just imagining something, or 81 Dojo is being presumptuous and assuming that they always placed a, uh, a swinging rook opening. But, uh, yeah, so my little dilemma here is that my bishop has nowhere to go because my knight just trapped it. But if I put my knight on the edge of the board, my knight would be trapped there. And my opponent would just play this pawn up to open this bishop right against my rook. So, yeah, this was kind of... I either had to put the bishop there or the rook there. And if I put the bishop here, um, I was seeing like a pawn drop deep in my camp. And it was very difficult to uh, hold on. But maybe that actually would have been fine. Maybe I was overly pessimistic. Well, there's only one file this pawn can drop on. Of all the times to drop the pawn, why now? I have a feeling as to why, but we're going to find out. I think it has something to do with this edge file. Yep, I thought so. So my rook is trapping my bishop. I did mention how I was interested in a rook exchange. Um, so I guess we're getting a rook exchange. Since I don't see anything better. So my knight blockades their knight. Uh, they are attacking my bishop. So I probably should do something about that. Um, but if I do something about that, I walk directly into a fork. Hmm. That's painful. And they say don't run from a fork, but I tend to. Um. So... A bishop for two minor pieces is in general a terrible idea, and this only accelerates their attack. So I can't do the obvious move. Um, but what else can I do? 
It's not good. Maybe it'll be okay somehow. Alright, well this is painful, but let's do it. I have exchanged my bishop for a pawn, which in general is a pretty bad exchange. Um, but also I have a little bit of an attack from this, although it, it runs out very quickly, so I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm mostly banking on expecting this silver to run away, after which I get a knight and the knight could actually be useful. And I'm also protecting my knight. And my knight could promote and maybe start making threats. But also, I have a knight drop to hit this pawn to fork this silver and bishop. Um, so, ideas are fun. It's just executing the ideas that's kind of difficult. Um... There are some serious problems with this position, or in this position. All right, what do we do other than panic? Mm -hmm. I'm still on the panicking phase. Um, I guess this is the most reasonable move I have. I want to be able to drop a pawn on my back rank to have, hold everything together. But also, I have three pawns, and if I could start using them on the center file, that would be useful. Also, if they do bishop takes pawn... I, well, okay, I was considering dropping a pawn right here, which makes no sense, but, um, yeah, I could actually gain a tempo from attacking this bishop. It was the more abstract idea I had. Whether it works in this variation is something separate, but, uh, it's an idea. Wait, I can't drag and drop the pieces the same way I do on Lee Shogi. Here I have to click, click to drop. Um, 
So yeah, this pawn is the weakness. Uh, let's attack it. I'm debating whether or not my silver is going to join in on this attack. Uh, but also, maybe at some point I do actually bother to drop the pawn on 5-9, like I was just mentioning earlier. This would solidify my castle for a short while. Um, I am actually curious what their next move is. Um... Oh, this king is defending the gold, and it's the only piece defending this gold general. So if I could somehow force the king to move, that would be a major accomplishment. Um... Okay, my silver joins in the attack. I'm playing hastily because I'm anxious and excited. Alright, let's try to defend. This does pretty reasonably well. This pawn gold shape does well defending against the rook. Alright, they have now captured my lance. Um... I'm not sure if that's the piece they need. So I mentioned that if somehow I could get this king to move, and the piece that could do that would be if I had a lance that took this pawn, uh, then my rook could take the gold. So let's get the lance. I think it's the piece we need. Um, but also, maybe I should have just brought the silver directly toward the king. I didn't see anything happening there, but, like, if I bring this up, they just bring up their silver, uh, and I can't... Well, I could advance further, but it's painful to do so. But maybe that's the right way to go. Um, hmm. So I have two files on which I could potentially put a lance. Um, I could hit the knight directly, which I think makes sense. Um, okay, what's the deal? How's he going to counter this? Perhaps I needed to do knight takes pawn last turn. Because, yeah, now he can just interpose anything between my rook and the gold. And my attack does start to run. And it'll continue slowly dwindling. Um, oh! Oops. No, you're right. Um... You could legally take this, and that would minimize material loss. Um, okay, yes. Um, knight takes pawn, forks the silver, and bishop. Uh, moving the silver just exposes me to a fork, and I have to give away a piece. I don't have a mate, so we have to attack this way. Although I have very low confidence in this um, being successful. Right, so I have to give up my knight for the silver. I don't have a way to continue attacking in the center either. Um, 
Well, let's play it out. Oh. Oh, that even strengthens this castle to put the golds together. I didn't even see that. That's a nice shape. It has a weakness, um, but it's hard to exploit because I'd have to get a token here and somehow break through on the third rank, which I guess I'll have to find a way to do. Um, hmm. Yeah, this is painful. Because my opponent has all the pieces. And my king is... Well, my king is safe for the moment, but... It's just painful playing this. Um... Hmm... I have no idea what to do. This supports me moving my silver forward again. Um, so they say four pieces is a mate. I have nowhere near four pieces attacking. And I'm about to be attacked by a lot of pieces. Um, I guess this is seven, but, oh, oh, that's clever, too. All right, well, at least we get a lance. Uh, let's enjoy that, I guess, right? This gold over here is not doing very much. Um, so now we get a lance to attack with. Um, if he's paying any attention... Uh, he'll do something about that here, but um, it's possible he might forget that he just gave me a lance. Yeah, this is attacking the far side of my castle. I'm surprised there wasn't a more direct approach. Um, but, you know, we'll take it. So I'm looking at dropping pieces... Um, on the three, four here. Maybe this is just force of habit, where if you see a familiar shape, you do anything you can to get that same shape. Um, So if there's one shape you know, and it's like the one you can always use to checkmate with, it's hard not to go for that, but there might be better ways to win. Um, I just don't know where to put these pieces. Like, this looks like the reasonable idea because it lines up directly with the king. Um, but yeah, he's going for a familiar checkmating shape. Um, I'm not even sure it is mate. Like, oh, I'm sorry, he could just drop the bishop here to fork me, so. All right. Um, hmm. Hmm, indeed. Don't know what to do here. I guess we take the bishop, because why not? That's an entire bishop. And if I could somehow break up this castle, that would be great. Um, preferably if I could do it without losing any material, because I'm kind of on a budget here. Hmm. Well, my silver is attacked. I do have a fork at the end of this line, so my 
the bishop will hit the rook and hit um, toward the king. But this is maybe even more forceful if I could put down the bishop first and then just take the rook without having to sacrifice a silver. I guess my opinion here is that this got overly complicated. Um, my opponent had a nice position and perhaps pressed a bit aggressively, um, leading to this interesting shape. But I think also he's completely fine if he just finds the right move. And he's got 53 seconds plus BOYO me to find it. Um... Yeah, I think he'll be fine. It didn't have to be this complicated. Oh, that's not what I was imagining. So if I take, if Rook takes, um, hmm, why am I taking this? Well, because I'm getting mated if this does not get captured. But capturing it gives him a rook, or a, a gold. And a gold is the right piece for him here. Um, hmm. Oh. So we'll see if I'm surviving this. If I had just taken the bishop, he promotes the rook right next to my king and continues dropping pieces. Um. This way forces him to find some accurate moves. All right. Um, that looks reasonable. Okay, what do we do? I mean, I need the rook if I'm going to checkmate. So, I can't just let that sit there. But, I think I'm in deep doo-doo here. Just because I'm playing against a opponent who outrates me so heavily, and they wouldn't sacrifice material like that without reason. Um... So yeah, if the lands drop, I can I can't do knight takes because there's mate in one. So I'd have to um, run with the king. So let's run. Make it a brisk jog. And we'll see how far we get. Oh, two knights. That's cool. Yeah, I think his pieces line up just perfectly to checkmate my king. If so, that's really clever. If not, I'm hallucinating, and that's okay. Um, but yeah, we've got one legal move. And then they've got various peace drop ideas. I, I can't read out all of them, but... Um, right. So now again, I have one legal move. 
Oh, I was going to do king takes this knight next, which actually is not legal. Um, yeah, so it's not as if I had some alternative. I made it either way, but this is mate directly. So, yeah, my king cannot go anywhere. Let's concede. All right, good game. Oh, right, resigning uh, actually gives the translated text as well. All right, um, so this is a teaching ladder game. So the idea is that after a game, we can, uh, sure. Uh, let's uh, do some analysis. Um, uh, oh, uh, sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, let me see if I can get Discord up and running and we could try the analysis that way. Sure. I don't have a headset, so this could be awkward. Um, but we could try it out. So, oh, right. Where's the give host button? Here it is. Uh... Uh, I'm not sure if this is worth it, but, um, let's see, where would we even chat, I wonder? Oh, right, we had a private conversation earlier, uh, so I could just call here. How do you do a call on Discord? It's been a while. Um... Oh, I see. Here's the call button. We'll see if we get an echo or not. All right, welcome. Hello, Mr. Toad, I presume. In indeed. And this uh, is yeah. Mr. Journey Step with us. <laughs> indeed. Um, yeah, so we played some kind of normal uh, Mukai Bisha, uh, I guess. I wasn't quite sure what strategy it was going to be. Um, we both kind of delayed declaring intentions for a little while. Yeah, this is something I experiment with a bit each game just to see, like, every player has a different way to handle this. Um, so I'm always pushing the envelope to see, like, how long can I de delay uh, this declaration and see if they're going to declare first and let me know. And all right, this, I think, is this gold move is the, the other the plan in this kind of structure, right? Um, to, 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 to do an immediate uh, rock exchange with the gold here. That makes sense because, yeah, later on I had difficulty opposing. Like, I wanted to push this pawn later, but I kept seeing a pawn drop on this 8-7 uh, square. So, like, yeah. Uh, the tactical... I saw some Japanese dude on YouTube once explaining the tactics is something like, if I do this... Uh, you've got this, and then my rook is dead. Oh, wow. That's cool. And also, obviously, you're going to start doing horrible things to me down this line, so I'm kind of lost in this position. I see. Yeah, that makes sense. So the the gold there is, like, I know, like, if I, I play rook opposite rook, opposing rook myself, so this is the only thing I have some vague knowledge about. If, uh, <laughs> if, if they try to go into anagma really quickly, this is one of, like, the aggressive ways that you can quickly start a battle. But, um... I haven't really declared what I'm doing. Uh, this is, yeah. yeah. It's kind of interesting for aesthetic rooks, though, because there's so many different lines I can do from here. Uh, okay, but you went into a standard Mino. And, okay, I'm not going to play a Bogan then. But I could still play, like, an Agava. Um, uh, I wanted to do, I was thinking I'm going to do Central Vanguard Born Strategy. Um, but then, obviously, your next move prevented me from doing that. Yeah, I, so I know in general with playing, um, like, this is, uh, I could push the central pawn, I could push this pawn, I could maybe get this uh, lance off this diagonal. Um, sure. So, uh, I guess there's a lot of ways I could play this. 
Um, yeah. For a while, I debated, like, do I put my silver right in the center here instead and threaten and try to bring it either direction, oh, but... Some, some kind of immediate silver tech. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I honestly, I don't know. Maybe. Um, I'm not sure how good it's going to be. So, so what am I going to do now? Maybe push this one? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Um, you come here, I don't know, it might, it might end up that I get to play a King's Head Vanguard strategy. And uh, I get like, I, I kind of just gain some time potentially if I just push you back and you don't achieve anything there. Um, okay. Which... Yeah, I think that makes sense. I've, I've played a, another game where it ended up in a very similar vein. And uh, yeah, it was difficult for me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so 0.56. And I was, at this point, I was thinking I'm going to try Central um, King's Head Vanguard, which I've never played before, but it's in the Art of Shogi. Um, and I figured, okay, what's the teaching ladder for if not experimenting with openings? So I was going to, I was going to try and do this, and then just. I don't really know what the plan is exactly. I guess we like we we well, we make a Vanguard next to your king, and then like try to ram this guy forward or something like that. Oh, that's fascinating! Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's so many different plans for Sensei so, uh, uh, for Static Brooks in these positions. But okay, so you push this pawn. Uh, so I'm guessing you were you were you were intending the high Mino at this point, or oh, sorry, the Silver Crown. Uh, yes, because I couldn't find a way to attack. I figured, well, let's just transition this castle to Silver Crown. Yeah. Um. Um. Yeah. So I. I kind of pulled the silver up and then immediately moved it back again, so it looked kind of dumb. Maybe it was dumb. I'm sure the computer will laugh at the game, as it always does. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so obviously I was intending to do this setup, the uh, the King's Head Vanguard pawn attack thing. Um, but then, yeah. I mean, I guess you, you didn't have to you didn't have to strike in on, on the Rook's file. You could also, you could finish your build-up, I guess. Um, yeah, this seemed like, so this is a moment where these generals got a bit disconnected, so I was thinking, yeah, maybe this is my time to strike, but um, but no, I do have time to build my castle, too. Uh, I'm always okay. going back and forth between, I want to attack, I just don't see a decisive way to attack. It's... Um, yeah, yeah, these ranging rooks, uh, ranging rook uh, lines with the without exchanging bishops are very reactive. And um, okay, so it makes sense, I guess. I don't, I have no idea what the evaluation of the position is. Yeah, um, I do like your suggestion, though. Like, yeah, I could, I at least have the option of continuing to build this silver crown. Yeah. And then rook takes or bishop takes. Like in theory, the rook trade should fade, should favor you, but in I, I like I immediately get a I, I get to drop my rook first, hitting your bishop, which um like I don't know if this is playable. What did you think about this? So here I'd assumed that like this would just um make it difficult for me to exchange the rooks at all. I, I thought this was going to land regardless of which piece took, and then after I did bishop takes, I realized you didn't have to drop this. Right. Uh, yeah. So uh, indeed, I, I was. I can drop the pawn if I need to, but like, is this good for you? I don't know. I mean, I know it normally is, but I have, uh, yeah, I have like a decent amount of generals near my king, and I get to drop my rook first. I think, yeah, you're absolutely right that like you have more generals near your king than you usually do, and I'm I started to build silver crown but didn't finish it, so like my position is quite weak. Yeah, you can probably just um, drop a pawn, I guess, and then you know, keep a rook in hand. So I guess I don't want to do that, probably. I mean, I don't know, because maybe I can maybe I can make a token here. Uh, yeah, I got, the other possibility is maybe... I don't know if the rook drop on my side of the board is any more painful. Um, yeah, that's the question. So if I drop... But the thing is, then it lets you drop your rook. Right. Uh, and, and usually, like, you'd have a silver on the left... or somewhere on the side that where your king's not at but here all your generals are around your king it's probably fine sure, uh, but I, I, like i'm not sure I, I, I don't think there's a reason why i should be better here either um, oh yeah i guess you're right yeah i mean i, I don't know this is too complicated for me so i obviously can't 
take your lines because then I I wanna because you're no longer bidding my gold, so you wouldn't have bishops in silver. Uh, but what am Yeah, how do I even attack here? Um hmm. Maybe I can maybe it's not so easy for you to attack either. Oh wait, I can I mean I can drop a knight here, but it's just a trick, isn't it? Like uh uh, you just move your king and you'll fight. I'm just being cute with this, uh... Oh, that's uh, cute. Yeah. I didn't think you would. <laughs> <laughs> I would pause for a minute and then eventually work it out. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I don't think I'm just... Uh, trying to do a cheap trick and just blunted the knife now. Uh... uh Uh, but yeah, I mean, this does at least raise the point that, like, maybe this is where you continue your strategy. And uh, what am I going to do about this eventual fork idea? Uh, just advance this pawn, maybe. Yeah. yeah if, I, if I just do that, uh, no, 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 I need to take. Well, what am I doing? Uh, and I, you're, you have a oh, I'm something. sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, I need to do something. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, this this position is quite complicated. Uh. Yeah, I, I probably would have done what you like uh, what, what you were what you were expecting. I probably would have just dropped the pawn. Like I would have looked at that line and considered it pretty unclear. Uh, either I would have dumped the like this one seemed very really reasonably safe for me, and I have something aggressive to do. Like either I might have tried that. Uh, yeah, I forget to make it so you're just gonna at least take down all the ones or something, right? Uh, exactly, yeah. I could use uh, in front of my rook to break through on the file, so this, this looks better than the other variation to me. I agree, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be probably so. So maybe what you played was correct then, if, if we're correct in our evaluation of our line. Uh, bishop takes. One up, okay. I don't know if that's necessary, but I think it's a it's a, like a fairly normal response to this um, when you take with the bishop in these scenarios. That makes sense, especially because uh, like if I push this pawn, uh, I'm inviting trouble on this diagonal. So th this, yeah, it's a pretty normal response here. There's not a lot I can do. Yeah, um, yeah, indeed, I probably would do that straight away. Yeah. That's actually, I'd like, you don't really have a good reply, I guess. I mean, you can drop the knife, but it's very dangerous. Probably I can drop the pawn. Uh, I guess this just went. Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't sure what you should do here. I was intending this, obviously. Uh, I don't know what your plan should be. Yeah, especially because, like, as you pointed out earlier, I started to build the Silver Crown and never really finished it, and now I don't really have a clear way to start attacking here either. Um, I think it's just tricky at this point. I, I'm not sure that I necessarily have anything. Yeah, no, I mean, I, but I don't think I have, like, some massive advantage or something. There should be a way to just continue the game roughly evenly, um, but I'm not um, I guess, like, if nothing else, I could just continue building uh, this castle, and it might take a while, but it's probably what I should consider. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna pose some immediate problems on this diagonal, am I? Oh, that, that's not. true. Yeah. Um. And probably you can't. Uh, the rook trade here is unfavorable for you. Uh, true, yeah. I think so. Um, takes, takes, and then just like, rook here. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, look, I mean, if you have to drop a defensive rook, then I guess that's not good. Right, yeah, and I think I do have to at this, yeah. So, so I guess this is some kind of a threat. So may maybe, maybe this rook's exchange form was a bit too soon that you should have like uh, 
finish your defenses first, maybe. Yeah, I think so. Um. Um, okay, so one man six, and then I just move my silver back again. But I think it makes some sense now because, like, you're probably going to be attacking me from the side, so he's he's better there now, and I'm obviously also opening up the bishop. Um. Okay, so you stop me playing the pawn up immediately, but then we have this uh, force and continuation. When I was hoping that exchanging the rooks would be better for me because I'm uh, I'm hitting your bishop when I drop my rook. Yeah, I, I think it is. Although, well, yeah, and then I played this, which was a bit aggressive. That, that was a, well. Drastic measures, but <laughs> sure. maybe a bit too drastic, but I don't know. Where can you put the bishop? Well, uh, it's quite difficult. Yeah, the um, other thing I could consider is this, but... Um... Yeah, that looks... So then probably I would do this. Right. Yeah, I didn't really have... I mean, this was what I was thinking, but I didn't really know what to do after this, so... That's um, probably good for good for static. Yeah. I mean, yeah, both of, like the immediate smoke kind of clears, but I just I have like a knight and a dragon. I don't think that you can drop your rook anywhere particularly great. Yeah. Okay, so maybe trying to confuse the issue makes some sense. Yeah. I thought I thought I should be doing well now, but of course, um, it's going to start to get a bit random as we run out of time. <laughs> it always seems to happen, just in this, in all these tournaments we play in. Um, yeah, like, I would, I would like. Uh, I mean, slow time control shogi doesn't seem to happen very much. Like you, you're a chess player as well, right? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm. Um, you know, I grew up playing. Um, uh, you know, two. Hours, you start with two hours each on the clock and have an extra hour in the middle of the game. And <laughs> so. Uh, this kind of, and, and and most of those games I was playing like, you know, the exchange slab or the ready defense or something. So compare that to the complexity of Shogi and uh, having to make decisions in three minutes <laughs> is very reasonable. Oh yeah, that's certainly true. Yeah. Yeah, when I played tournament chess over here, we tried to get entire tournaments done in a single day. So we would frequently find each player get an hour on the clock. So I would play lots of crazy, wild openings and get exciting positions. Yes, an hour still is some time. Yeah. Okay, so rook takes my promote, obviously. Uh, looks right. Uh, getting my rook in, I guess, makes sense. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Um... I didn't like your next move. I thought my bishop was well placed there where you put him. I wasn't sure what you wanted to do. Um. Yeah. So. I've what what I saw is that I have three pawns in hand, and I did want to drop a pawn back here to secure this rank. Um. Uh, this was your idea. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, this this looked natural to me. Yeah, maybe maybe I should have done this first, and then later consider the center pawn. I don't know. Because now it's a fork, whereas after you got my bishop out of the way, it's no longer a fork. Um, and if I'm doing, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I feel like the, my instinct is this is a better move. I may be wrong, of course, um, because if I do this now, then obviously uh, I've blocked my bishop, which was a which 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 became a horse in a couple of moves. So this is a much improved version for you, I guess. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure what I was going to do about this move. Um, I was expecting you to play this, and I, I hadn't really made up my mind. Uh, yeah, if I can't use the bishop very effectively, then it's not going to be easy to show I have an advantage. Probably I do just defend that with the silver. Um, I'm not sure what else I do. And then you've weakened... Yeah, you block my bishop. My king's a little weaker. That looks like a good a good trade off for you on that deployment. That makes sense. Yeah, somehow I had imagined the bishop jumping over the silver to still defend the center square. But no, this yeah, um, 
and then now it makes sense for me to play this and I could start trying to attack down yeah it's gonna be better than the other variation yeah yeah um, yeah I, I I think you're right that this night drop is much more forcing and better messes with my coordination um, yeah okay so Yeah, because now, like, I, I literally don't even care, I guess, right? This this is fine, I guess. I'm just going to take that guy. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, obviously, I do care a little bit, but it's obviously it's much less of a threat. Um, okay, so I wanted to promote my bishop if I can. Um, yeah, yeah, this is really quite a big difference from the other variation with my bishop uh, in a really active position. Yes, yeah, and also defends uh, over here, so I can't do anything tricky either. Uh, mm. Yeah, I don't know how you should play this. I prob probably I'm doing well now. Yeah, I, I think, think... It's, it's difficult. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I've been in time pressure for some moves, and here are my, my random-ish sort of moves. Just, we're bad. <laughs> uh, it's, it's it, I'm sure yeah. I didn't play it perfectly either. I don't know, maybe yeah. I'm just... Uh, so we did... Uh -huh. Um, I don't know. Is this, this probably doesn't help, right? Uh, like with, uh, with the idea of promoting the knight here. Yeah, it's tempting. And then I saw like, well, you could just put a piece back here. Um, oh, I can drop a pawn, can't I? Yeah, yeah. Oh, or even a pawn. Yeah, that's right. Yes, yes, I probably would have done. Yeah, okay. L logically, I guess I should have the advantage here. So you tried the lance drop, and I figured uh, getting rid of your lance and knight for the uh, for the uh, silver seemed a good deal. Like I was, I was hesitating to maybe do this as well. I don't, I don't know what the best move was. Yeah, I think uh, it made sense what you played. It, um, although this is probably fine too. I just take it. Um, I don't know, maybe night drop and then night takes, something like this. Um, the other thing is, like, if I don't move the rook immediately, I'm never going to activate it, so I should probably move it now. Even if I don't have a clear plan of what I'm going to do with it, but maybe. Um, um, but yeah, something like you're suggesting, eventually getting this other knight out there and trying to attack somehow might be useful. But I think what you did in the game uh, did get rid of my one attacking piece. So exactly, yeah, it seemed to leave you with less resources. Than I did. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I guess. I think gold takes seems the like the natural formation with everything defending. Yes, after you. <laughs> yeah, what's like one square like available, but I don't think this is ever going to be a big threat. So. Right. Yeah. Once I'd seen these golds stacked on top of each other, I, I realized I was in trouble. <laughs> um, that like that's a very hard shape to break. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh... And, okay, yeah, we were just blitzing moves here. Is this, is this, um... I guess this is forced jumping, right? I think it is. I couldn't see an escape. Um, yeah, I think that's right. Because if you go here, I have the... Oh, yeah, you have a knight. Okay, my brain is telling me to give up. <laughs> I was, when I when I played, I was calculating variations where we were doing this, um, uh, completely forgetting that my knight guards that square. So okay. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. I was thinking, ah, oh, it's really important. I have a gold in my hand to stop his king from escaping, but um, no, 
actually. That was just totally irrelevant. Well, it's funny. I had the same hallucination, so there must be something to it. Yeah, I think the answer is we're both not very good at shit. <laughs> Okay. Well, yeah, maybe in a future teaching ladder, I might allow this, uh, the, the art of shogi, this uh, idea that you've tried, maybe a, a play a more standard sort of thing, and we'll see that happen. I don't know. Yeah, 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 sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've, um, I mean, the thing I like about these positions for the static rook side is that, I mean, I can choose between more Bogan, Anagama, Millennium Castle, uh, Central Vanguard, King's Head Vanguard. Um, I mean, most of these plans, I believe, are crap or professionals wouldn't have stopped playing them, but at our level, I don't think that really matters. <laughs> so, uh, you feel like you have some strategic flexibility. Um, sure, yeah. yeah. I'm always changing what I'm playing, which is probably not good, but... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm the yeah. same as well. Like, um, uh, but I used to do the, the similar, similar thing with chess, like, uh, I mean... Uh, in terms of like preparing for opponents, you know, you try it. Um, you try to obviously pick an, an opening that was uh, st stylistically difficult for them. Um, you know, like a EG exchange slav against the young player who wants to checkmate you. Right, right. <laughs> and then, yeah, you see like some young players will play like the London opening or something like that, and you have to try to find a way to make things complicated. I was a kid, I played the London one before it was cool. Now everyone seems to play the London. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> 20 years ago when I played Bishop at 4, people would, you know, would pause and have to think. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to make the opponent think a bit. Yeah. But not good to play the London system. I think it's stimulated my uh, chess development somewhat. Uh, yeah, I think uh, by now um, resources have been published suggesting what to play against it, so... Um, yeah, now everybody has their own favorite system or systems against it, so... Um, also, like, for the development of a young player, like, the, the complexity of, a, of, a, of, a, of Queen's Gambit, uh, and the theoretical interest, and all the different plans and sharp lines and so on, there's, there's a lot more to it than London, I think. I mean, I'm not saying the London is easy, it's still pretty complicated, but... Right. There's a, compared to, maybe, you know... There's a reason mainline openings are a mainline. I actually, I, I, I got to 2300 uh, B-Day playing 1G6 as my main defense as black. Oh, and wow. And London as my main weapon as white. Oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, and that, that's, uh, that's as far as I got. Um, that's quite so impressive. Really... Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah, I've only made it about 1950 or so, B-Day. Um but I've always been changing my opening, and eventually uh, some of my friends convinced me to start playing the queen pawn opening, just so like I could cut down on my prep and have some set of uh, things. It, it was easier to prepare that. Um, mainline, mainline queen spawn uh, with c4? Uh, yeah. Okay, so I mean, it's uh, still a lot of complexity, but like yeah. with e4, yeah, I would just play uh, everything, and it <laughs> Queen's Indian, uh, the Nimzo Indian. Yeah, it's um, it's a lot. The Orbin Counter Gambit. Right. The Baltic Gambit, if anyone still plays that. Uh, yeah. Honestly, I like chess. The, the chess is just... Part of me misses having the vast amounts of information at my fingertips, fingertips the chess base, and uh, compared to Shogi when we're like reading random snippets of articles from 1970. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, you, do you speak Japanese? Unfortunately not. Yeah, the same. So, yeah, my access to information is, is similar to yours then, kind of random and spotty. Yeah. Well, it's good news is, like, the uh, these open source uh, tools and sites continue being developed, and I'm trying to be some part of that, but it's a lot of work, too. Yeah, you're working on my shogi, right? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to help out with it, uh, at least to help get it off the ground. Um, um, so, yeah, I, uh, originally I'd started helping with the Play Shogi project a little bit. Um, and originally, before that, I've been a Lee Chess developer. Just uh, oh, okay. 
helping more criticizing things from my chess uh, expert perspective, but um, sometimes being able to contribute code, especially for their variants. Um, it's like, oh, why don't you give us new stuff? I haven't, I haven't been here in a while. Yeah, I'm impressed. Uh, I think it's Gene Fortin who uh, develops the site, uh, Telmarch. Yeah, the, yeah. He's a, I know that guy. The, well, I don't know him, but I know I've seen him in Shogi tournaments and the, the French uh, Shogi player. He's pretty strong. Absolutely, yeah. He's very strong. <laughs> Way stronger than me. Um, yeah, so, public game collections. Yeah, it's impressive. Um, It just keeps building the site too. So like, there you invented that puzzle mode, um, and it's now got a sign in and a high score list and things like that. So it just keeps adding more and more to the site. Yeah, it's it's impressive. Survival puzzles. That sounds like fun. Yeah. To try that out. Yeah, it's good practice. Uh, yeah, thanks for the tip. I will, I will, I will do that study. I actually, I have another shogi game today in the World Shogi League against Peru. Oh wow! Well, best of luck with this. Yeah, thanks. He's he's like I think he's nineteen hundred and something, so I will need luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll have to watch. All right. Okay. Thanks for the game. All right. Thanks and for the game. And for the uh, yeah, good luck with the shogi development, and thank you for your work on uh, light light shogi and uh, play shogi. I will I will be using those things. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Uh, I'll certainly see you around. Thank you. See you. All right, take care. All right. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, uh, you saw my opponent uh, for the uh, tourney to master event um, is trying to schedule a game with me and I was occupied much of the weekend, so we're doing some last-minute scheduling of that. Uh, he says at 21 UTC, he'll the next to be available, so I'll meet him then for that match. But um, yeah, this is an exciting game. I guess, um, yeah, no, my opponent Journey Step here had... Uh, uh, I struggled a lot with this game because... Generally, my opponents have not been playing static work openings. And even those who have, we've generally, I've played some kind of crazy chaos um, on the left side of the board and just deliberately given up material. And I ended up doing that again this game, but not deliberately. Um, but no, he's right that this is actually more complicated than I uh, thought it was. Um, and yeah, had I played like this night drop, this I'm still worse, but not as much worse as I thought I was during the game. Um, yeah, playing the static work opening is a challenge. Wait, that's not the button I'm looking for. The button I'm looking for is desktop audio. There we are. So when I move pieces, you can hear them again. Um, but yeah, this was mistimed, but that was in time pressure. Um, Bad things happen in time pressure anyway. So this crazy sacrifice is not as completely crazy as it looks. Because um, it does gain some tempo trying to break up the castle. Um, I was just so upset by this rook drop and intensely wanting to play my pawn here. That, um, that inspired me to play this crazy move in the middle. Um... But I could actually calm down a bit because I'm not mated despite there being a rook here and like they have a bishop in hand and we know the bishop's eventually going to drop here. And it did in the game. Um, but I still have time in this position to try to work something out. Um, so yeah, this is... Even though like I prefer my opponent's position here, it's not as bad as I thought. It's not all gloom and doom. And if I do place the knight, like what I was looking at with bishop takes here, and I'm like, oh, well, this is terrible. Well, this is not a legal move. So, um, yeah, I have to um, think things through in terms of what's actually possible. 
All right, I missed lots and lots of comments during the analysis. Um, that's fine. Uh, let's see. <laughs> ninety percent of Japanese opponents play Static Rook, <laughs> and ninety percent of the Westerners play Ranging Rook. Um, yeah, some people. Oh, yeah. So, um, this King's Head Vanguard pawn is an interesting idea. Um, so, yeah, the Art of Shogi. Um, I've certainly heard of this book before. I'm still working through Katagami's Endgame book, um, and if I get through that, then maybe I'll be a little more familiar or comfortable um, with just not panicking in these sorts of endgames. Like, I tend to panic, and it goes horribly. Um, yeah, even here it's complicated, although I think I made some valid points at the end, but um, some... Yeah, I think we're all still learning how to play end games. I didn't see this move at all. That was funny. That showed up on the board and I'm like, oh crap, I missed that. So a combination of pushing the center pawn and then doing this last drop, which doesn't quite work out. Maybe I have to do something. Just kidding. All right, maybe it's my best try. Um, maybe this is sensible, but I don't think it leads anywhere because you can easily uh, he would find something like this. So, um, yeah, what is my point? My point is that I need to redouble my efforts, get through the endgame book, rewatch the fourth file Rook series, even though this wasn't a fourth file opening, I could still borrow ideas. Um, but, uh, yeah, just playing a lot more might also help. Even though, like, each time I play, I embarrass myself a bit. Um, because I'm always changing what I'm doing, never quite comfortable with it. At some point, I've got to find something that works. Oh, the Fourth File Rook series, um, Shogi Harbor has um, done some analysis of a lot of Fourth File Rook opening positions with us. Uh, the other thing I've got to figure out so, like, I'm so accustomed to seeing Ranging Rook openings. I need to have a counter for this. Like, I was not happy playing this on move 3. Um, I mean, it's fine. And it's especially fine in the case where um, I move my gold over to the left here. And I actually have some ability to play a, a genuine opposing Rook strategy. Um, here that really wasn't an option. So, or rather, after I played my gold to the right, um, I wasn't able to, like, exchange rooks forcefully here. And since my opponents played Boat Castle and they've made so many pawn advances, um, like, I have time to do something like this. Um, so I could actually, maybe if I'm going to be playing and alternating between all of these ranging rook ideas. I should study one or more of them. Um, so yeah, maybe studying opposing rook is worth it too. Or maybe I just need to settle on what am I going to do? Like, here... I didn't... I don't know what to do. It's like, this is an idea... This is an idea. I didn't really like any of this. So, um, I need to have some kind of idea what to do against this. And this is fine. It's just, uh, after I play this, I have no idea what I'm doing, because I usually play that when I'm playing fourth file rook. And here I am playing an opposing rook strategy, and, I mean, they all transpose into each other. You could just spend a move to transpose into fourth file, third file, whatever. But um, you keep losing a move every time you transpose. But um, yeah, just having more familiarity with this would make it easier for me to play and not get in time trouble. Um, but no, my real problem is that um, toward the end I started panicking. Um, 
so also I wonder didn't really look at this but maybe capturing here was better so instead of sacrificing my bishop for some random pawn um I mean I'm still sacrificing the bishop but this might have been a better way to go about it um I don't know It's a lot that I have not examined. Um, but yeah, having to create all these moves in 15 minute shogi is kind of hard. Um, so yeah, very well played on my opponent's part. That's uh, excellent on their part that they've reached 2300 Fide. That's, if I remember right, that's Fide Master. Like, that's where you get your title. And um, if you can eventually get that to like 2400 it's life master if you have enough games at that rating and 25 is international master and stuff but yeah 23 that's quite excellent um so um yeah if i'd known i was playing a chess master i'm not sure if i would have ch affected how i play like i still have to read stuff Against many players, I feel like I have some ability from my extensive chess tournament experience that, like, I can maybe outread some opponents in some positions, um, and so I just aim for complications. But if I'm playing against a master, they can read very accurately, too. Um, yeah, so... I guess um, general advice I would give to players in this teaching ladder is play what you're familiar with. Unless your objective is to try to get interesting positions and see um, just how those positions go. But if you're trying to win, play something familiar. But um, beating a master is kind of difficult. So, um, And I did play this opposing rook and I wanted to see how it went. And, um, yeah, this idea of pushing the edge pawn while this bishop doesn't go anywhere is interesting. Um, so I'd mentioned, like, maybe I didn't like this so much, but maybe this is fine. Even though I don't have anywhere decisive to put my rook... Um, my problem is I was alternating between, like, let's build up my castle. Oh, wait, no, I don't want to do that. Let's do something else. So, um, yeah. Having some clearer idea of my intentions in the game would probably help. But also, now I know if I play Static Rook and my opponent plays Ranging Rook or Opposing Rook here, um, I have some idea of, like, this kind of thing is playable and, like, uh, thanks to him explaining in the post-game analysis that this is also an idea. Um, that's something else I can... Well, I never castle my king to the left, but if ever that happens, this is something I can consider. Or if somehow we get the symmetry of this and I can consider this on the right. I have often been curious if like this sort of thing is playable or not. Here, because like I built up such a solid castle, it doesn't make sense. But in other positions, maybe it would be worth pursuing. Um, so yeah, I could. Yeah, it's an interesting game. Um, we had a really deep analysis afterward. Sorry about some of the echo at the beginning of that, but um, uh, the trick I had to employ was muting my desktop audio so you could just hear through my microphone, which apparently picked up uh, my speaker, so apparently that works. Um, but yeah, this is interesting checkmate. Um, I think there might have been an easier way about some of this. Um, like, since I have no attack... Or my attack could easily be blocked. There wasn't a need to do this, but uh, this gives me one tempo. Or maybe I could do something if I'm really clever. Um, 
I don't think I'm very clever, but one tempo is a lot here. Uh, I think they still have this position under control. It's just that might not have been how I handled it because I'm not so familiar with end games. Um, now, what was that? There was something else I wanted to comment about here. Okay, taking the bishop was tempting. Hmm. Yeah, okay, I don't have any mate any other way, so I have to take the bishop. Oh, this gold drop surprised me. Um, just seems heavy, given that later on he will want a gold to attack. So, I thought there was something else here. I'm not sure what. Um, maybe I'm just imagining things. How did we get here? Oh, they played the rook to the back rank again. Okay. Um, I think that makes sense, but if this is so strong, you could play it in the other move order. There we go. That's... okay. I was wondering why suddenly I hit some attacking prospects, whereas previously I did not. Um, so I guess the trade-off here is, um, that it would allow me to just aggressively put the silver down and then do nothing. Um, and so, like, what he did was perfectly fine, but since, um... I'm not so good at end games. I would have played this much more chicken sort of thing where I don't exchange the lance immediately. Um, but um, I guess this would encourage me to put my rook somewhere so that he doesn't block it. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's a lot I can do against this gradual buildup of an attack. But the way he played it was fine, too, and perhaps better. Um, yeah, I should practice real endgames instead of nitpicking this. Yeah, you're right, that's a standard way to break Mino. Um, I'm just being a bit of a perfectionist at this point, and it's not gaining me anything. Yeah, if I want to learn, I should practice from looking at um, real Sume Shogi positions. It's so tempting to look at this and just see, like, is there some minimal advantage I can extract out of some crazy position? But I guess what I'm more curious about is whether this... Oh, sorry, didn't intend to show this, but I'm not sure if this is, like, the best attacking idea here. Um, I think that's what confused me. Um, like, yeah, that is a standard technique. Oh, I even said as much during the game. I don't need to repeat myself. Never mind. Um, but yeah. Um, I'm just trying to, I don't know, absorb it all. There's a lot to absorb. I'm trying to also not sound like an idiot. It's too late for that. But um, um, but yeah, it was just um, overwhelmed in Bioyomi, and even a little bit more overwhelmed just how the checkmate formed so unexpectedly. Um, but everything he played here was a very standard way of attacking, so I shouldn't be so surprised as I am. Oh, thanks. Yeah, well, at least I'm able to make some babble that sounds nice, but uh, yeah, uh, he was able to carry us through this analysis because I struggled a lot. I think my most interesting point I made during our analysis 
was just having to do with this exchange um and how i anticipated like okay exchanging rooks probably did not yield very much because this castle shape is so solid so i anticipated this and during the game i had played this instead fully anticipating well he has to play this he doesn't and the worst part is that after he uh, plays what's in the game actually we have the game variation right here okay this is a good cautious move um this is probably fine too and if i do something crazy um i'm inviting trouble so i can't even like do something tricky here um so that's the part that surprised me the most um, but I think I made a valid point that, like, the Rook Exchange... Well, and he suggested the same thing first, but, um, yeah. What else did I contribute? No, he, his point about, like, put this out here allows me to actually play opposing Rook strategy, so I should remember this. Oh, you think so. Well, yeah, if he attacks the bishop with the pawn, yes. But, um, let's see, in this position, yeah, if he attacks my bishop, this feels better for me. But, um, it's so like, here I think that's appropriate, and it's just a challenging game, and like you said, he can build up this attack, and I have a pawn in hand, so I can maybe do something tricky at some point. Um... So that would have been interesting. Um, but, um, and yeah, if he played the pawn here directly, yes, that would have been um, good for me. Sorry, uh, I'm not sure what else to look at. Uh, I think we both covered as much as our amateur minds will get at this point. Um, this is a good defensive idea. It surprised me because I've never seen it before, but it makes sense, given that I've burned a move on something like this. He's got a move to burn on something like that, and I can't break it. And if I did what I intended to do, that's bad. So... Um... Yeah... I've had other positions where I brought the gold towards the rook and then never been able to move the rook. This game, I... Uh, how did the rook end up moving? Uh, I was able to force a rook exchange, but in my entire position heavily suffered because of this. Um, so... Oh, the other thing I didn't consider, I mentioned somewhat during the game, was like, do I need to push this and put the knight over here? Um, maybe. This leads to a trapped knight. Um, but maybe it's not the end of the world. I don't know. A lot of positions are possible. So, yeah, if I can just pick between if I'm going to build a castle or if I'm going to attack, if I can just pick one of those two things, um, maybe I'll get further. Uh, yeah, in almost every position, you could play the rook to some other file. You could almost always burn one tempo um, to change your plan. And you can change it over and over and over again. And if your opponent just keeps pushing pawns, you have time to keep changing your strategy. So another thing we could have considered, and probably should have, instead of this push... Like, I could play this. And um, I'm not sure where my bishop goes, but I could consider this sometime in the future. Um, but possibly better is giving my pieces some space to escape to places. It avoids the complications that struck in the game, or at least delays them. So...
That's possible, yeah. Um, if I watch slightly higher rated players play more games, maybe I'll have more ideas to take. Coming up with ideas in 15 minute shogi is kind of rough, even with um, the Bioyomi afterward. So, uh, yeah. Very well played on my opponent's part, and best of luck to him in his uh, World Shogi League game. And thanks to everyone uh, who helped with uh, post-game analysis here. Yeah, there's just too much for me to know, but I should start somewhere and start up instead of starting everywhere. Um, so, yeah, the way this played out, actually at the very end, when I exchanged the lance, well, he had a lance already, never mind, yeah. Anyway, good game.